drive to Birmingham now on BBC One for Friday's House Call. feeling today. Andy and the chaps are in the garden creating a totally tropical space and some sunshine to boot. Yeah, hopefully. Let's what are you doing this. with these well, rocks? we're doing something with, uh, with all these rocks. We're making something very nice. I know it looks a bit weird at the moment, but it's going to look fantastic later. It does I look hope. weird. Yeah, what's going on under your coat? What? <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> well, I can't tell you that. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I'll tell you in a minute. OK, now then, yesterday you very kindly chose a light rock, I will tell you, for our conservatory. And today, Graham's imagination is running wild. Isn't it a lovely, yeah. finished conservatory? Looks lovely, but you've got two ideas for us today. I have. I'm going to show you how to make a conservatory fun for children and later how to do a dining area in a conservatory. Nice ideas for the dining table. Uh -huh. So you know what? All our hard work, it's got to go. Never mind, a room Come in, like chaps. Oh. Right, clear it Very out. Busy in here, I'm off. Now then. Ugh. Now, I've got to tell you what this is in a minute. Morning, chaps. Oh, so the oh, oh, you come to Pestalina. <laughs> and, uh, no, listen. This morning, I was in the. I was getting some makeup on, as you do, because obviously I need lots. And I did find this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Jimmy. Craig Williams <laughs> official calendar 2002. So what I've done, and Craig doesn't know about this. I, I've, no, I've got to show what you. What have this you done? First. What have you done? I've got to show you. December's my favourite. December's my favourite. Hang on. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Ladies, there's a man in the house. Oh, look at his face. Oh, it's now I'm going to hang it up here. It is, it's a fantastic calendar. So I've set up a little competition. You're not hanging on where we're working. No, no, no. So you can win, you can win <laughs> this calendar. And you need to ring us on our normal number, 08,000-928-925. I'm sorry, look, come here. Now, the question is, what, what is the are, question? what are these? <laughs> What are these? A, pectorals, <laughs> B, biceps, or C, abdominals? 08,000, 925. You can be the proud owner of Craig's calendar. Works. I've got yes. And, um, and you'll sign it, won't you? We'll all sign it. We'll sign. Right, sorry about Thank that. Thank you. You're doing the hallway today, aren't you? I am. Now then. <laughs> What are you two laughing don't at? Don't worry, don't worry. How hot is your fire today? Oh, Dave Barbie. Lot of hot air. <laughs> Lots of hot air. Top auctioneer with us this morning. Join us, thank you very much. Do you know it's amazing what you can find behind the fireplace into the fire <laughs> 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 Now there could, there could be a fortune in your fireplace. This is going to be mad in here. There could be a fortune in your fireplace. Why don't you give us a call? 08,928925. You can double it up with the, with the Craig calendar if you want it. And, um, Paul and David will be taking your phone calls later and, um, and talking about fireplaces and accessories, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Right then, let's go back to this hallway now. This is normally my quiet space, my little quiet area, and it's definitely not going to be today, is it? Uh, well, it, Can I it, squeeze it, in here, yeah, love? Yeah. It sort of <laughs> is. No, today it's going to be a very, very serene hall, but it's, we're, we've got a, a nod to history, we've got a nod to the future, and we're combining the two, so it's going to be very, very, very good. The whole thing will work very well. Now, the hallway, by you know, historically speaking, mm -hmm. is the centre of the house where people received you know guests and all that sort of stuff. It was it was a, an airlock, so the hot air didn't get lost in you know the great um, huge spacious houses they had. Nowadays, we've got very small halls, um, but you know it's, it's the same rules apply. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it has to and be. It's the, the first thing first you bit, see when you walk through the door. The it's hallway, the first isn't it? thing important. you see, and it has to be important, but it can't be cluttered because a cluttered hall is more off-putting than an empty one. I Ooh, think. We don't like cluttered. So absolutely not. So you know, it, it's getting all started. Let me. I'm let gonna me go. Get I'm going to see if there's any emails. I'm going to see right, if okay. anybody's ringing for Craig's calendar. <laughs> All right, I'm sure I've got hundreds of calls. Um, when I said nod to the past, what we've got here, we, you can see we, we, we've got this paper, um, which uh, Craig's going to talk about in a minute, but it, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting paper because we, we've got some... Here, you can see some pomegranates um, just coming through here. Now, this is a symbol of fertility that was very fashionable in the Edwardian times, which his house is. Um, that's 45 quid from Zoffany, a roll. Now, I know that sounds horribly expensive. It does come in, an, you know, all sorts of 
shapes, sizes and colours. Um, you can get um, inexpensive ones like this. It's at 8.99 from B&Q. Now, this, you will get a traditional look. And I know you might be looking at it and thinking, oh my god, I ripped that out ten years ago. But it's really, really fashionable and very smart to get these sort of traditional papers back in, but on one wall. On the other walls, you can then add a, a contrast colour. Let me show you this one, for example. Um, we've got black, cream and reds in here. We could choose any one of those colours. Here, again, uh, we've got some greens. We could paint that a really nice, fresh green that will go with that and look. Uh, you know, t now you can see how these sort of papers can work really well. A little zing of red here as well. So what we've got here now is we've chosen our colours, we've chosen our paper. Now Craig's going to tell you more about the paper thing while I crack on because I've, got, to, I've yes. got some work to do. When you're lucky enough to decide on which paper, because there are millions of different designs and colours on the market, when you found it, one word of advice is, if you only need nine rolls, buy an extra one, buy a tenth one, because they come in various batches, and you find you're a little bit short and you buy it a month or so later, you could have a different shade. So, a few key points to remember. Firstly, <laughs> firstly, the wall has got to be clean and dry, and if the the wall itself hasn't been sealed in any way, put some sealant on it or put a little bit of adhesive on it first. Our particular wall's got some emulsion on, so it's ideal for it. When you've cut your paper to size, put your adhesive on. Now, adhesive, you can generally mix your own adhesive or you can buy a pre-mixed. This particular one I'm using is a pre-mixed one. And I'm putting it on with a roller. The reason I'm putting it on with a roller is it sort of spreads it a lot evenly and takes it that little bit further. You simply spread it all over like this. Now I'm only doing a small section because I want to do a little demonstrating about cutting it around the skating board, which is generally a tricky part to get around. But obviously if you're doing this at home, take a little bit more extra time. What I've done on the wall here, I've drawn myself a guideline. You can do that by using a plumb line, or I've actually used a spirit level, and you sort of run it up along the side. Let's take that a little bit further down. You run it butt up to your line, like that, and then you simply get your, your brush, you spread it either side, like that, making sure that there's no bubbles in either side. And when you come to the corner, the skating board, should I say, you tuck that in. You can trim this off with a Stanley knife. A lot of professional decorators do that. But if you're a bit unsure with a Stanley knife, just use the edge of the scissors to draw or we'll press a crease on there, and you can pull it off. Cut down your line, like this. But again, obviously, if you're at home, Take the time doing this because it's very important. Get yourself a little cloth, wipe off the excess adhesive off the skating board so it doesn't stain. And there we go. It's fine. After about 10 minutes or so, always go back and see that there's no bubbles or anything on there. OK. How's Gordon getting on the stairs? Well, not so bad. I'm just having a bit of excitement with some pink paint now, saying about all these colours that we're going to use, and I've just found another. A little tester pot. Brilliant. They, I mean, they cost next to nothing, and they, you know, you can have all sorts of colours. Now, in a hallway, you need lots of things. When I was saying earlier to Susie about having you know, enough stuff in a house, but not cluttered. This, I'm going to make a little a, a key rack. Um, and I know, again, you might be thinking, oh, God, you know, are they on their way back? Well, they are. They are on their way back. And they're brilliant little things to have. So, what, just very quickly, splash a little bit of pink all over it. God, I've got you an email. Can I just oh, do yeah. it really quick? What are you doing actually, that, that? Actually, that, look, that matches your um, oh, shirt. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Okay. Um, I, I've, this is from Catherine McCready. She's bought some paint from B&Q called Lime Drop. It's too lime. It's too strong. How can she tone it down and make it less citrusy? Um, I would say add, get a little tester pot like this, funny enough, oh, um, right. of orange, a, a really, really strong orange, and drop it into the paint and just calm it down bit by bit. Okay, just thank you very much. Leave you, leave you to okay, I'll, I'll, we'll show you all this a bit later go. on. Um, give us a call 08000928925 or email us has called bbc.co.uk. Here's the chapter in the garden. Hi Susie. Right, well we're doing the structure of the garden first and what we're using are these gabions and you'll see these by the side of the motorway um, and basically they're used for retaining soil uh, but we're using them here just to build a wall. It's one of the cheapest ways that you can actually build a wall like this. Um, it works out at about 35 quid for one of these crates. It's a metre long, half metre deep, half metre wide. You can buy these crates and then there's a quarter of a tonne of stone in there. Basically you just plonk it all in and then we can just put the lid on like that and then you wire them together with these uh, spirals, sort of like naked Zebedees really, aren't they? Just wire them in there um, and then stack them one on top of each other. Very, very simple. And then down here we've got this water feature. 
This is an RSJ, a steel girder, and this cost us about, it's eight foot long, cost us about 50 pounds, but you could go to a reclamation yard and probably get it for half that price. We've painted it with um, red oxide primer underneath, and that will stop the rust from coming through the paint. And then we've put this blue hamrite paint on top of it. And then if you look under here, we've put just a bead of silicon, just run it along there, and that basically will stop the water from pouring back underneath like that. It'll make it go straight down in a sheet into the water. That's the idea, hopefully, anyway. And then down here, we've got the reservoir. And this is a cold water header tank. You can get it from a plumber's merchant or a builder's merchant. But in fact, you could use any plastic reservoir for this that's waterproof. Pump goes in the bottom, needs to stand on a couple of frost-proof bricks so it keeps it up from any uh, detritus. Put that down there. Then on top, we've got this mesh. Nice sturdy grill. Trap door, which we've cut in it and hinged here, just simply with some wire. That's so you can get access in the spring to clean it up. Then on top of there, we put this, it could be carpet underlay or terram, something like that. And that will stop dirt from falling through and also um, things like frogs from from falling into it and harming themselves because they drown if they get stuck in. And then on top, we're going to put these cobbles, but we'll see more of that later. Over here to some of the plants. Now, a tropical garden, you immediately think palms, um, bananas, that kind of thing, but we're also going to use, very importantly, some ordinary garden plants because it's all about contrasting foliages and bold leaves, things like these hostas. You can use a stilbis, that type of thing. We've got some ferns here, also very useful. And then we've got uh, some ivy too, so we can have that trailing down over the wall. We've got um, some bamboo here. This is Philostachys nigra. Nigra means black. And you can see these wonderful ebony-like stems there. And you can also trim some of these leaves off just to expose that a bit more. But what you have got to do is make sure that you keep bamboos nice and wet at the bottom, because otherwise you can see here, can you see these brown tips on the leaves? You'll often find that when you're buying bamboos from the garden centre. But don't worry about that. That's because they don't really like it in these pots. They blow around and get scorched by the wind and the sun. They dry out. But as soon as you've got that in, water it really well for the first um, year or so, and then it'll uh, solve any problems. Now, we've also got a pomegranate here. Now, you you'll see these around in the Mediterranean growing. Um, they'll grow outside in this country in the warmer parts, but the thing is, they won't fruit, and they really need to be in a conservatory. So I'm going to take this home and see if Susie wants it. Because if you have a cool conservatory, keep it a few degrees above freezing, then you should get lots of lovely fruit. That's the idea. Hello. Hi, Susie. I've got this pomegranate for you. You've got any room for it? Well, we're, uh, a bit, we're a bit full in here at the moment, don't you think? We'll do it afterwards. Later? Thank you very much. I'm Brilliant. grateful. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You can leave it there, it's all right. We've got space later. Okay. Okay, so conservatory, um, not just used as um, a sunroom or a sunroom. Absolutely, sun and you know, lots of um, people now are using conservatories for children and things like that. You know, we were talking earlier in the week about bringing the home into the conservatory yeah, that links yeah. with the garden. How better? In the summer, the kids can play out. My only point is, conservatories are normally hard floors and sharp corners. Absolutely, so. and we have got quite a bit of that going on in our conservatory. Yeah. So our wonderful uh, stone floor, which is French limestone, yeah. 44 pounds a metre, um, not great for children. No. So we've come up with this, which is a wonderful. This is like a, a rubberized matting. Um, and you can just put it together so simply. It comes in little squares, each of which with an alphabet letter in. It comes in other designs as well. And you can just pop that down, and it's really, really great for children. Yeah, so and they so can fall easily over and bump on that and with no problem. Absolutely. And this is um, a great idea. And, it, you know, how quick it is to get that up. And it's stimulating with the colours too. Well, isn't it? Actu actually, the whole colour thing I think is really important to go into because. Um, it's out with all those baby pinks and baby blues that we used to use. Guys, in guys, Graham, I'm yeah. sorry. Can I, can I take Susie away? I've just got, I've got so take much to do. Take me away. I, well, I'll take you away. Can I take you away from all <laughs> well, of this? this is unprecedented. I'd, I'd rather be here. If I could sit down here. You're where I went, Dick. OK, I'll, I'm just, really I'll sorry. just do the thing. Really Listen, time. just before I go. I'm, I'm, um, I'm going. OK, I'll come I'm in going. a second. Don't forget that Paul and David are going to be taking your emails um, or calls about fireplaces and accessories. Um, How's Paul at bbc.co.uk, 08,000, You'd be right, wouldn't you? You've got an urgent... Cool. Oh, no. Okay, what was I saying? Oh. It's mayhem in here. Oh, yes, colours. Um, 
uh, psychologists have actually proven that, you know, children, when they're first born and, and of a new age, take in primary colours more than those baby blues and pastels and things like that. And it encourages stimulation for the child. So a lot of high street um, shops have taken this on board, and indeed designers. So you get a lot of very bright... Uh, colours going on in children's schemes these days, which I think is great, all the primaries. And the brilliant thing about that is it's very easy to pick things that go together well. And, you know, it's, so long as you've got these bright colours, you don't have to be a fantastic designer to put the range together. All these things come from different stores, but I think you'd agree they've really got impact and go together. So, as well as our flooring, I thought I'd just show you a few other things that I found. Now, furniture for children, it's very important to get some furniture for them to sit on, but again, you want it to be cheap, lightweight and practical. This little range here, this all comes from Ikea. Now, the little stools are five pounds each, and again, in our wonderful bright primary colours. The little chairs, ten pounds each, and our table, twenty pounds each. It's all lightweight, flat-packed, you can put it in the boot of the car and put it up at home, very simply. And again, you know, that's easily movable if you want a nice dinner party or something later. Moving on, storage, very important for uh, conservatories and for, sorry, for children in a conservatory. Lots of storage ideas, he says, as he bashes into that. This is great, this is Bob the Builder. Again, his details are on our website. Open his cap up, great for storage. And these lovely snuggle blankets that we found again. Lovely primary colours, great for snuggling up in, child safe and all that. So that's storage, but if you haven't got a nice bit of kit like that, we've just come up with an idea to uh, funky up a lovely little ottoman. Might need some help with this. Piers, bring this in. This is Piers, my fantastic design assistant. Now, earlier today, this started off looking like this, which is a flat pack, basic pine ottoman, and we've just transformed it put those out of the way, by adding, here's here you go, a bit of, bit of felt to begin with. And if your child's the type of child that comes in with j uh, jammy fingers and everything, you could use the plasticised material if you wanted to. Fire retardant foam, the top of our ottoman, and then it's a simple case of stapling all those together. And when you're stapling, one, pull like mad, two, three, pull like mad, four, pull like mad, just to get the tension right on the top. Once you've done that, go around the whole thing. And then, just a quick cheat here, we've taken some of our letters from our mat, drawn round them, cut out some more felt, and then glued them onto the top. And we've used a spray adhesive. Uh, so that's nice and solid and uh, down there. Again, you could use a plasticised fabric if you wanted to. Painted the outside in a water-based paint, child-friendly, primed that first, very important because it might get scratched, and that's that. And then Piers and I have been very busy with our windows because, again, filtering sunlight for children, very important. You often see these in the back of cars to filter sunlight, but how about using them in a conservatory? I think they're a great idea because, actually, the sun is streaming through here at the moment. Oh, you're back! You've and done that, your job. That looks... <laughs> <laughs> what What's he been doing to you? Oh, Susie. No, I'm not very good with paint. Oh, well, you better not touch anything in here. It looks really good. Yeah, that, oh, it's fallen off. But anyway, there you go. That's the idea. But here's an eye being quite creative. Sticky back plastic, which you Hang can on. get here. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah? But I've got to go and see the boys because okay. someone's waiting on All the right. phone. But it, looks, it looks really lovely. Go and wash your hands. I know, sorry. Sleep. Are you going to be doing a dining room later on? Dining room later on. OK, so. So that with this, Piers. In with the dining room. Oh, chop, nice. chop. From that. Mayhem to the dining room, which is a slightly more serene area today, because David and Paul are here. <laughs> now then, chaps, we've been right to take a couple of phone calls and some messages and things about five yeah, minutes and glad accessories. To glad to, yeah. yeah. Anybody who's got any questions, just to ring in 08000 or email us bbc.co.uk forward slash high school, that's the website. Look high school at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> I'm going, I'll leave you to it. Right. Now then, David, now the fireplace used to be the whole centre, focal point of a room. Yep. Nowadays, it's a television. Um, believe it or not, what they used to have is lots and lots of fireplaces all over the house before central heating and so on. And a typical one is this type of Victorian bedroom fireplace. And how can you tell it's a bedroom fireplace? Basically, there's no surround. That's right, and you've got the lugs either side where it was screwed direct onto the wall. That's right. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to put these in the living room. It just to look totally out of character. Yes, out, out of proportions as That's well. That's right. Yeah. Now, the cast iron, there was a reason for cast iron. Basically, they, they could make it easily, and it was very strong heat resistant, so they could make it a very flame-proof. 
cast iron produced at Coldbrook Dale, it was like the plastic of the 20th century. That's right. Now, originally, apparently, in the bedrooms, they used to bring up hot coals from the fireplace downstairs and put them into here just to air a room. Now, was that your job? Oh, yes, I can remember that. Way back <laughs> in the First World War, you chicken <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. I mean, you're, you, you probably grew up in a, an 18th century house, to take it. You probably grew up in something like this, did you? Oh, th days, this is wonderful. This is superb. This is William IV, round about sort of 1835, 1840. Look at all these classical details, like this acanthus leaf, mm -hmm. and you've got this egg and dart motif here. Fantastic. It is really a splendid piece. The thing we're missing is this huge marble surround. It would have been a very prestigious fireplace. That's right. It would have been really ostentatious, wouldn't it? Now, just look at the size of this well here, I and mean, you can actually have a really good fire going in there, couldn't you? That yes. would actually... And unlike you, Paul, during the 19th century, they could control their drafts. <laughs> <laughs> we get strong trousers. <laughs> <laughs> now, the trivet, that's a good thing. When the trivets are uh, great usable items, if you have one of these open fires, people often miss these, and you can keep things warm. You can keep a kettle warm, you can cook things on them. Fantastic. But this wouldn't necessarily have been with this fireplace, because this is for a posh house. Well, that's right, yeah, yeah. but, you know, we, we're, we're all scrubbers around here. <laughs> but these are great. I mean, Speak it, for yourself. Did somebody... I mean, if you had servants these days, would somebody come in and actually start the fire for you in the morning, would it be somebody's job? Well, not only... Yes, yeah, starting the fire, but not only that, all this would have to be black -leaded. Well, that's Right, it's it difficult. would be polished up. Yeah, you difficult. can still get black leather. How often was that your job then, did it? You can just see me some boot polish <laughs> <laughs> and a wet rug. <laughs> I feel like one sometimes. I think, t to be honest with you, I think this is probably the best way to buy them, isn't it? I mean, this is a typical sort of Victorian I can never fireplace. understand why people take these fireplaces out of houses in the first place. I mean, it's your generation. It was a 50s, 60s thing that they used to do. They used to go for this sort of modern look, didn't they? They rip out all these lovely Victorian Yeah, you were saying it was the minimalism of the 1950s and 60s. That's right. Yeah, that's probably that's <laughs> Now case. they're putting them back in again. That's right. But these, I mean, this, this, this really is the way to buy them. I mean, that all this sort of paint can be stripped off and this can be re-blackened, can't it, and made to look just as good as any of the other ones. That's right. What I like to see is where it's got the original tiles in. Yeah. And I think these tiles are, are genuine, although the, these might have been sort of changed round. I think there's a mix max going on here. I think somebody's... Uh, oh, sorry. Do you know, when my wife there. and myself first got married, um, we used to collect tiles and we'd go to uh, a demolition site and for five pounds buy about 20 tiles. Incredibly. And we'd mount them on boards and hang them up the staircase. The only trouble is it came to us when Janet said, it just looks like the London Underground. So we <laughs> took the whole lot down. Sounds more like a public convenience to us. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> tiles all over the place. Well, these are fantastic, but you want to look for the original tiles. Do, do you obviously. like this um, this curb here, this copper one? It's different. I mean, if you've got sort of a marble surround, you've got to have a curve. That's right. It's very, yeah, very hard. Yeah. But what about accessories? I mean, we've talked about sort of fireplace, and they range really from a couple of hundred pounds upwards, don't they? But there are better things you can buy to go in front of a fireplace. I, I love these things here. Yes, they're quite good. Highly decorative. Now, people can don't I, always can know. I oh, you? Go on, can I... I'm sorry, I know yeah, it's extremely it... rude, but we have, we've got a few people that oh, right, want well, to yeah, right. you okay. can ask them. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I'm so sorry about my hands. Look, <laughs> just watch just your hands. the fireplace. <laughs> okay, you know, look like a chimney sweep. Just watch your um, hands. Um, we've got, I think we've got, um, uh, 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 hang on. Oh, Liz, have we got Lindsay on the phone? We have, yeah. Oh, hello, Lindsay. Hi. Hi, hello, yeah. hello, Lindsay. Are you Lindsay from Chesterfield? I am, yeah. Oh, OK. So w what's your question? What it is, I've got an old cast, black cast iron fireplace in my living room and it looks really dirty and a bit tatty and I want to clean it right up, but I don't want to paint it and lose any detail. It's difficult, isn't it? I mean, you can get blackening that you can do it, because they, they used to do it on a regular basis, you used to blacken them uh, with like, sort of like a boot polish, if you like. But what I would suggest maybe is to take the fireplace out and have it sort of blasted and have the sort of brought back to the metal again and start again. Yes, but you have to be very careful you taking it out, because if you split this fireplace, it's cast iron, it's very brittle, you can never repair it. Yeah, and they can, they can rust yeah. at the back. With I, I'd them. I would leave it in situ and I would use treble O wire wool very carefully all over the surface to get the rust off. Right. Is that something you use quite a lot? It is indeed, yes. OK, thank you, chaps. Thank, thank you, you Lindsay. And I think Joe is on the phone too. Are you there, Joe? Hello there. Hello, Joe. Oh, How are you doing? Joe. All right. What, what's your question, Joe? Um, I live in a 1913 terraced house with the original fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, it's a marble effect fire surround. And I've got a watermark on it. I'm wondering if I can put it right without damaging it. Oh. Right. Can you tell me, is it a slate surround that has then been marbleised? 
Well, I'm not sure, <laughs> because I've never taken I, I think from your description it probably is. Yeah. Now, it's very difficult to remove these watermarks, but again, this wonderful treble-o wire wool, very, very carefully, just rubbing up and down, possibly with a wax base, will get rid of the, um, the stain. But isn't there some sort of, like a, like, a lemon juice substance that you can use, particularly on marble? I'd, I'd go into your DIY shop and ask them, well, I'm sure there's some sort of material that you can rub onto it that sort of restains it for you and brings it back up to its natural beauty. Thank so you, ask, ask your DIY people. Right, thanks very much, Joe. Thanks for your calls. Thank you, chaps. Right. OK, great. Yes. Yeah. Well, right. Is that all? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, I was really enjoying that. Oh, and so were we. But we've got to go to the hallway. Here's Craig. Hi, Susie. On my knees again, just for you. But I'm actually on my knees in the hallway here, and I'm putting some floor coverings down. Now, there's three, three products we brought here today to show you about... And this particular one is a hardwood one. You get it in most DIY stores. It costs about 12 to 16 pounds a square metre. Now, in a hallway, you've got to imagine there's a lot of traffic in, and you need a good durable flooring to put down. So the other two, other two we chose, one was a Calm Dean one, and this particular one is in the middle range. It's about £35 a square metre, and I personally think this one out of all of them is going to be the best. And then we've got a one called an Antico which, again, is a similar thing. It's a vinyl-based with a rubber-backed, but this one costs about £52. And in all honesty, this one for the £35 is a lot more better value. It's quite simple to go down. With it being a rubber base, you have to fix it down with an adhesive. Now, the flooring we're putting it on, you must make sure that your flooring is like your walls, obviously clean and dry and dust-free. If you've got any signs of damp of any sort, not a damp-proof course in the floor, they do recommend to get that seen to beforehand. If it's just a little bit uneven, you can always put a self-leveling compound down, let it dry for about 24 hours and then fit this on. Now, putting it on, generally people think it's a, a specialist job. This particular tool that I'm using, as you can see, it's a trowel, but it's got like little coned teeth on it and it allows you to spread the adhesive quite evenly and it doesn't allow any bits or pieces to actually get in it. Now, don't worry too much about getting the adhesive on the existing uh, sections because it does generally wipe off. You simply put that down like so, press it quite firmly. You've got about 15 minutes when you apply the actual adhesive to fix down, but if you just get a damp cloth, you can easily wipe the adhesive off like that. If, unfortunately, you get some stubborn bits in the morning, there is a, I think it's a citrus adhesive which you can spray on it and actually wipe that up with a, a Brillo pad of some sort, and that'll keep it quite clean. But I think Gordon's still hanging around on the stairs. What are you up to, Gordon? Well, we're, uh, at the moment, I'm just soaking up all the lovely sunshine that we've got in Birmingham. I just wanted to show you this colour that we chose earlier to go with the wallpaper. And a top tip, I've taken it up to the top of the wall and onto the ceiling. Now, that'll give it a, a real sort of touch of modernity that you perhaps want in the, you know, in the sort of big traditional hall like this. Another little thing that we're doing, we're to, uh, we've got some screens that we're going to put over the window. Now, we also want to have some privacy, and these windows are particularly big. This sheet is 20 quid. Now, that sounds quite a lot. Um, this is from Habitat, but it's a fantastic colour. It's a really, really nice grey. It's a very deep grey. Um, my preference is to use it for a window screen, and all that is is tuba two, sorry, tuba one, I beg your pardon, that Craig put together for me, and then staple into place using a staple gun. Um, look at that. I could have done a nicer corner than that, I have to, <laughs> I have to admit, but, you know, needs must when the devil designs. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to put that up. Now, over the enormous window that we've got here, and you'll see that the whole thing... Now, if you've got any trees or any, you know, any movement behind there, that'll just sort of sparkle through, but you still get a sense of daylight and, and all the, the light coming through there. Now, on this, on this wall that we've got, all this colour that we've got coming down the stair, which is opposite all our, uh, the, the wallpaper that Craig put in, I've covered this up because I didn't want to see it earlier, because I have already started this. We've got some vinyl lettering. Look at that. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. This stuff is so, so versatile. If you have a look, this is just a soft vinyl lettering that you can get cut. All the details are on our website, and you can have it cut in anything you want. So it could be any, any sort of uh, poem or names, anything, and it just literally just sticks on really, really simply. It couldn't be easier. That, incidentally, is a, Wood, a William Wordsworth poem um, that we've just nicked from a book, to be fair. Um, oh, I'm getting all that all, all over there. Kez, actually, if you could just um, finish that for us, that'd be great. Now, 
Light, lighting. We've done the cover of the window. We've done a window screen. We've got bits on the wall. We've got the floor sorted. I want to show you a really, really easy way to jazz up an old lampshade like this. Now, a bit bruised, a bit battered. What you do, same paint that we had before, slap it all over. I'm going to do this very, very quickly. I haven't got time to do it all, but I'll show you the principles of it. And when that's dry, give it another coat so you can't see the light coming through the shade. This one is white inside, so we don't have to paint it white, OK? Now, using a pencil, mark top and bottom, you know, in true chippy style, like that along, using your finger as a gauge, like so. Top and bottom, I'll do that there as well. Using a sharp scalpel, you cut out, like, getting down there. That, that'll drop out and you can hang some beads in there. Now, if I just pass that, this, I, I, I know this seems like this, suddenly we've magic this out of nowhere, but if I just give that to Gary to hang, very, very quickly, I'm going to show you, we started earlier a key box, we've also got here a, the ingredients for a letter rack, and what that is, is again, a board the same size, what we're going to do is put a little bit of this wadding in, Cover that in the pink felt and add a splash of black, and you'll see all that come together a little bit later for the final secret. There she is, she can't, she can't help herself. I'm matching so, look today. Oh, yeah, well, I'm matching. <gasps> what, how can I get that off? Look, it looks terrible. Um, it's just emulsion, it'll wash off. See, I was, I was the... helping do the lamp. <laughs> she I was, was doing, actually, she really was. But um, just wanted to say, you will see all of this in the end because all of this will be revealed. So I know it looks like a big pile of stuff. We'll come, we'll come and see it a bit later on. Absolutely. But can I just These say, can I just say, yeah. wall. Genius. Do you like Genius. It? I do like it. At first, you sort of think, mm, that's a bit of a shock. And I suppose you can get it in italic writing and different Latin. I tell and stuff you, like you that. can get it absolutely whatever you want, in any colour you want, any size you want. You could have one word, ten words, a whole poem. It really is a wonderful, wonderful way to cover a wall. And uh, just a, a quick point yeah. traditional wallpaper, and then we've got um, some really modern writing. So we've got the old Love and the it. new living together. Love it. Genius. I'm going to crack on. OK. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Oh, I know my words, Worthy Sue. You need a bit of magic, a little bit more inspiration. And we've got it in the kitchen with our how lovely you, Robbie Hannah. How are you? I'm all right, how are you? Good morning. Doing flowers for um, Gordon's hallway. Fantastic. Um, red. Red. Blue yes. hallway, red flowers. Yes, not your obvious choice, no? but I think it's going to look fantastic. OK, what have um, we got then? We've got roses, really, really beautiful red roses. Mm -hmm. um, three different varieties, four actually. You're a romantic, aren't you? Wow. Um, this is ecstasy, and you just need to smell yeah. it. It's the one rose which <gasps> has the most incredible scent. Oh, that one. That one, yeah. That is beautiful. It smells divine. This is Grand Prix, which is for its colour. It's a beautiful velvety rose. And this is Black Bacara for its colour. Right. Then we also have pomegranates. Yeah. Romantic, the food of love. This is... A not just a normal pomegranate you get in the shop. Yep. Food of love. Food of love. Um, I've scored this one, if you can yeah. see along there. And that's the best way to open a pomegranate is to just twist. And then you get that beautiful interior. Lush. Really, really gorgeous. And today I'm also using some silk flowers to bulk up. Because mm. you can buy them and you can reuse them again and again. So I've used silk flowers in my range, as you can see this peony here. And these amaranthus. Which I've got here. Amaranthus. Amaranthus. Because to be honest, um, I've got to keep my hands. <laughs> yeah. They do look vile, don't they? Um, it, rose is very beautiful and they look stunning, but quite expensive to do a, a really big well, as I've done here arrangement. So th these just kind of take the price down a little bit, don't they? So as you see, I've got the red Grand Prix here, the black Bacara, then I've got the ecstasy there, and I've added some pomegranates in to mm. bring them with the wallpaper. Because if you see the wallpaper through there, it's got pomegranates. In. Oh, good idea. That's nice. Yeah. Um, some ivy, some beautiful hydrangeas, as you can see here. I These are real. Up, these are real. I grew up in a garden in Zimbabwe with acres of regimented roses of them, so they're very something I'm very I love. So we have. I mean, we all have the, the in the hydrangeas garden. in the garden, don't we? Definitely. And remember, when cutting hydrangeas, they have a woody stem, mm. and you cut up the stem, and that helps them. What get, to feed the water? To get more water up. So that's, that's today's arrangement, that's one of the arrangements. We're going to be doing another one for on okay. the stairway. This is going to go on the table, this is it? going to go on the hall table. Okay, what is it? Is it just box. in water, It's in, a, it's in it? a water in a glass square tank, and I've just bunched all the roses up and put them in masses, and literally just put them in like okay. that. Okay, and any tips with the water to, ke to keep it clean, to keep it... Keep it clean, a little bit of bleach, oh, okay. and some sugar. And just mix that in, and the sugar feeds the... The flowers and um, the bleach stops the water going mucking, smelling. And stops that um, nasty yeah, smell yeah, horrible, that you can get. Horrible. Oh, fantastic. Oh, 
And so this one's going to go where? This is going to go up on the stair on the plinth. So it's a it's a topiary tree. It's quite it's going to be quite free flowing. Mm -hmm. um, container, metal container, similar to that one, which I got a trunk of wood which has been stripped of its bark. So you could just do this from any piece that was yes. lying on the ground, couldn't you? And I've set it into the container with concrete. Um, could you could you set it in with anything else? Or plaster of Paris. Right. Okay. Concrete. Quick, the concrete. Concrete's the best. Mm -hmm. Then I've taken an oasis ball, a sphere of oasis, which I've soaked in water, and then I've just rammed it onto there. Right, and then, and then, and and then you're just pla going to place these in. I'm going to place them. <laughs> Chuck that one out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what we've got in here is we've got the, the silk peonies, as I showed, very, very beautiful silk peonies, mm -hmm. hydrangeas, skimmia foliage, right. and then the roses. Um, so that's great. And then roses, which I've done into bunches okay. of five and five. And stop. Placing those in yeah. so we can see what sort of general look we're going to get. So, literally... So, actually, I... what you could do is go to your garden and have lots and lots of foliage um, to keep the price down and have just a few red flowers, couldn't you, roses? Or... Definitely. So, as you say, I start just putting in there. I mean, garden foliage, anything, berries. I've got sort of like privet berries here, which I mean from the garden. And I'm just going to be adding these in. Okay. And actually, you know, you know, with these pomeg pomegranates, you could use um, any fruit, couldn't you? Limes. Limes, or... apples, anything. And, and then, and how often would you have to water this? Just soak it very, very well once, and then you can just water it once through the week, and. And then it will be. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to keep adding these. Um, All right. I'll tell you what. We'll we'll come back and come see back. the finished product when yeah, you've well, done I'll, it. Yeah. That's going to take I'll, a little while, yeah, isn't it? I'll bring it through into the hall and. Um, Fantastic. You can get a look there. Gorgeous and beautiful as always. Great. And so is Andy in the garden. Do very well, thanks, Susie. Um, now, first of all, tree ferns here. We've all seen those on telly hundreds of times recently, but in the winter, you've got to protect them, um, unless you live in a very warm part of the country. So, very simple thing. So, you can get bracken, or you can get some straw, or some people even put dustbin lids on the top, and you protect the crown of the plant like that. That's where the new fronds come from. Um, it's not really worth wrapping the trunk, um, but you must, in the summer, keep that very, very wet, because that's where all the roots are, rather than at the bottom, like normal plants. Um, over here, we've got New Zealand flax, Formium tenax. This grows really, really well in coastal areas. It'll grow to, um, well, well over two metres tall. But you've also, you, again, you've got to be careful that it doesn't rot down at the base. So if you live in a very wet area or very wet soil, be very careful. Put lots of grit in the bottom. And again, you can mulch round the bottom, and that will keep the, the roots nice and warm, like an eider down in the winter. Here we've got Fatsia japonica. It's a bit of a 70s plant, this, really. But those great glossy leaves are superb for this type of garden. And you can also use that as a house plant. It's quite tough, but you will find sometimes the frost will blacken these new shoots that you can see in the middle there. So you might want to put that in a sheltered part of the garden um, against a sunny wall and away from uh, strong winds and that type of thing. Canna lilies are great. They're one of my favourite plants. You can't get away with leaving these in the ground, really, though. So what you have to do in the autumn, you can chop off the main stems like this, and then you, I, I tend to leave these stems. Now, you can either lift them out, shake all the soil off and treat them like a dahlia and dry them out and keep them in a frost-free shed. Or you can even just leave them in the pots, which I think is best. Let them dry out, don't water them at all, and then in the spring, as they start to shoot, you'll see these shoots coming up, just start to do it gradually. You can see they've got these wonderful banana-like leaves. But speaking of bananas, Japanese banana. Now, this is from the mountain slopes of Japan, so it's used to a bit of cold and it will grow in this country, even though it looks really, really tropical. It's root hardy, and that means that in the winter the stems will all be knocked out by the frost, but then in the spring it will shoot again from the base. But that means that you only get fairly short plants each year. But if you want to have great big tall things, as much as three metres high, then what you can do, chop off, seems a bit brutal, chop <gasps> off those stems. I can't believe you just done that. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? Hacking away. Bag over the top. Yeah. Bag over the top. Wrap the stem up with a bit of fleece and then cover it with some hessian and then that will grow again next year. Oh, you're so harsh. Listen, just a quick one. Oh. Um, quick email. I've noticed that with the rocks, you've stepped those instead of building them all That's on right, one. That's right, yeah. The reason for that is it gives it extra strength. So we've got a wider base at the bottom. So it's not like a the... pyramid. That's the idea. Okay, yeah. so it's important to know that though, isn't yeah. it? If you're going to do point. something like this. <laughs> okay, good. Come and have do a look like at that. this. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Oh. Right. Now look, very heavy plants, if yeah. you want to move them into your greenhouse or something like that, in